I think there's a, an element of uh, you know priceless coming together and of people from different horizons, different backgrounds. I think it's essential to keep that coming together, uh, to keep it in the center of, of our debates in Europe. Uh, it's been 30 years since uh, the, the revolutions of 89, uh, and I think we still have a lot to uh, learn and understand about, about each other. Uh, I say this as a French woman who co covered some of the revolutions in 89 and now lives in London, and I, I, I was uh, incredibly ignorant of that other Europe, you know, uh, Jacques Rupnik, the French uh, political scientist, once called it l'autre Europe, the other Europe, but actually, you know, these are all our brothers and sisters. We were, we were, you know, 89 was a reunification. It was not an enlargement. Mm -hmm. What happened afterwards was uh, not an enlargement, but a coming together, a reunification. And uh, we know that politically this perception of a gap between the East and the West has a heavy cost right now for the European project. So I think it's essential, especially in this anniversary year, to, to look at that. And being in Budapest really made sense to, to, to get to the bottom of some of the thinking. Mm -hmm. uh, we haven't solved the disagreements, but at least we hear a bit more uh, across the table uh, about how people are thinking. Um, and that's, that's very valuable for my job as well. The good news is I think we're going to have a truly pan-continental debate. Uh, it will accelerate probably just a few weeks before the vote. So I think it's interesting that we're having a, a wide European conversation and debate about common topics. Uh, of course, it's going to be a fight. And I think the, the, the result will, uh, will, will be a more fragmented parliament. Um, but that doesn't mean that it will be a completely paralyzed parliament. I think we will see, uh, of course, the results on the 26th of May, but afterwards we will see probably some recomposition of the political scene. Uh, let's see what happens to the big groups, uh, how, they, how the, P the EPP and, the, and the, the, the Social Democrat group do. Um, uh, and, uh, and what happens after that. So um, it's quite unpredictable. I don't think we're going to see a far-right uh, populist takeover of the European Parliament, uh, but we will see uh, something different uh, and, and a reshaping of, of Europe's political scene with also the next steps, which will also be elections in national member in nation states in the member states uh, in the coming years. I would call them European principles, actually, um, uh, because when you say values, sometimes there's an element of relativism that creeps in. So I would say principles, and I think that the European Union is a political project of economic integration with pillars of principles which are uh, human rights, human dignity, uh, social justice, um, and of course peace. Uh, and, but I think, I think when, we, when we have a debate about European values and principles, we should put front and center uh, the univers universality of human rights. <laughs>